Hi everybody, this is Crystal. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to yarn bomb something. Now, I yarn bombed my mailbox, as you can see from the photo. I did not have enough of yarn, I underestimated, to finish my complete bombing. And you'll see that at the end where I run out of yarn. So the photo is just kind of an example of what it would look like when it was finished. But, um, so I need to get more yarn to finish that. But it's it's just kind of basically just to show you how you can yarn bomb anything i'm i'm doing my mailbox but um it's kind of the, kind of the same concept for everything so um it's just kind of a quick video just to show you yarn bombing is actually pretty fun actually so uh let's go ahead and get started on it okay for this project i am using Burnett maker outdoor stripes which is it's an acrylic and nylon blend. Um, the color I'm using is called Fresh, Fresh Citrus Stripe. They make this in stripes and solids. It is a bulky five. I consider it on the larger side of a bulky five. Um, it's um, it's made for like outdoor things. Like you can see it's fade resistant. Um, I see a lot of people make pillows and stuff out of them for your outdoor furniture. Um, I didn't want to do that. I thought this would be perfect for yarn bombing something. So, there are, um, find how many, 249 yards in a cake. And then I'm going to be using a size, um, 10 millimeter crochet hook. Okay, what I decided to do is spruce up my old janky mailbox. This has been here since this house was here, I think. It's, and I'm going to yarn bomb it. And I'm going to use the Bernat Maker yarn to do that because it's the outdoor yarn. So, it's actually going to be quite easy because you can pretty much make it uh, fit around any mailbox. And I'll show you how I'm going to go ahead and do that. What you want to do is first we're going to start with the post of the mailbox. And you want to make a chain that wraps around your mailbox like this to where it comes together. Now this yarn has quite a stretch on it. So you kind of want to stretch it just a little bit around your box. That way it doesn't become too, too loose or around the post of your mailbox. So like you can see how mine comes together now. And it's stretched a bit. So make your chain long enough to go around your mailbox. Stretched a bit to where it comes together. So that's how we're going to start off do working the base of our mailbox. So I'm going to go back inside real quick. Okay, once you've got your chain made for your mailbox post. Remember you just went around it, stretched it a bit around it. Because this is mighty stretchy, uh, mighty stretchy yarn and um, you don't want it to come undone. What you want to do is add one more chain to the base. And what we're going to do is single crochet rows back and forth until we get to the length as high as our base is. And then what you do is you go put it on your base and you sew it together while it's on your base. Okay, we're going to start off by single crocheting in the second stitch from the hook. And then it's one single crochet in every stitch for the length of your chain. Now remember, yours will be different than mine because every mailbox post is different sized. So it does not matter how many chains I have right now. It only matters that you made your chain to fit around your post to come together. Stretch just a bit. Not like real tight, but just a bit, you know. So it's one single crochet in every stitch until you get to the end of your chain. Once you make it to the end, you just want to chain one and turn. And we're going to start right back here in this very, very first stitch in single crochet. Now again, it's just one single crochet in every stitch until you make it to the end of the row. And we're just going to continue doing rows of single crochet. Now you should always have the same number of stitches at the end of every row as you had after, at the end of your first row. Remember, yours is going to be different than mine because 
my mailbox post is, I, I doubt, the same as yours. Everybody's post is different, so. But however many chains you had at the end of row one, that's what you should have at the end of row two in all the remaining rows. Just like that. So it's pretty easy now. Make it to the end. Chain one and turn. And repeat. It's just rows of single crochet right back in that first stitch. Rows of single crochet until you get your piece as tall as your mailbox post. Or as tall as you want it on your mailbox post. Maybe you don't want it to go all the way to the ground. You know, it's up to you. It's your mailbox. But after we get this done, we'll sew it on our mailbox from outside, and then we'll start doing the top of the mailbox. So I'm going to go ahead and finish mine until I get mine the length of my post. Okay, now what you want to do is, after you get it as long as you want it to be for your post, don't tie off. The only thing we're going to do, see I just left it after my last row, is slip stitch it to our post. So, um, it's kind of going to be hard kind of to show you, but all you do is just wrap it around your post and then you just start slip stitching it on. So you just grab a piece here and now remember it's stretchy, it's going to be tight. I don't even know if I'm getting that in the camera. I'm trying to bring it low so you can see it. But pull your yarn through and slip stitch it all the way down the side. Grab the next stitch and the next stitch here and slip stitch it. I hope I'm in camera when I'm doing that. And then your next stitch, next stitch. Slip stitch it. Now, if yours isn't as tight as mine, that's fine. Mine's pretty tight, but it will loosen up over time. And I'm going to do this all the way down my whole entire pole. Until it's on. Slip stitch it on. It's like 112 degree heat index out today, and I'm out here doing this. But you get the kind of the idea. Just like that. And as you go, uh, you can keep pulling it up and then pull it together, slip stitch it more. So I hope that I got that on camera all right. Just slip stitch it all the way down, kind of pull it up as you go. And then we'll start on the top. Okay, I got mine sewed up there. It's a nice clean um, slip stitch seam. And then all you want to do is uh, tie it off and hide your tails. And now what you want to do for the top is, apologize if my camera is shaky, up here, you want to make your chain the same way you want it to go completely around your whole uh, box. So all the way around, you want your chain to, to fit. A little snug, not too snug so you have trouble uh, sewing it together. I apologize for all the trucks going by also, but. Um, a little snug, just like, like we did for the post. See, on my post, is, it's tight on there, but it wasn't so tight that I couldn't uh, slip stitch it together. But you start here, just measure your chain, just like we did for the post, all the way around. And I'm going to do that, and I'll meet you back up inside. And basically, it's just the same thing. We're going to single crochet it until it's all the way across, and then we will 
come around the bottom and slip stitch it on the bottom and hook it to this. So yarn bombing is pretty much the same thing for anything. If you want to yarn bomb a tree, pretty much do it in pieces and sew it, you know, onto the trunk as you go. If I want to yarn bomb that tree, each trunk of it, you just do it in pieces. So I'm going to go ahead and measure my chain just like this all the way around the entire piece. And I'm going to go inside because it's hot out here. And while you're measuring, you want to make sure you leave a... Sp now, if your flag comes off, that's fine. I got some mail in there. My flag, I'm going to unbolt it. And then I'm going to, after I get mine yarn bombed, I will bolt my flag back on. That's pretty much most flags are bolted on. So that's what I would do. If yours isn't, then you're going to have to measure out a little slit. Leave a little slit here for your flag to go through. But I think most of them just bolt on like mine do. Uh... I'm pretty sure so that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna make one solid piece get it sewed on or take my flag off sew it on and then I will put my flag back on the outside of my yarn bomb and bolt it back on so that's the best thing to do for the flag okay and once you measure it all the way around your mailbox it's just the same thing we did before add one more chain single crochet in the second from the hook and we're just gonna do rows of single crochet until we reach the length of our mailbox and then we'll just sew it on slip stitch it on from the bottom uh, just like we did for the post so it's it's pretty easy it is a little time consuming I think as far as getting all your pieces slip stitched together especially if you were going to yarn bomb a tree with multiple trunks I think that would take a while but it's really cool when it's finished so so I'm going to do one single and every stitch to the end of the row then I'm going to chain one and turn and do a single crochet again, just like we did on our previous piece. Until our piece gets as wide as the top part of our mailbox is. Just rows of single crochet. Remember, mine's probably a different size than yours, so I have a different number of stitches. So I honestly don't even know how many stitches I have. I just measured with my chain, so doesn't matter how many you have as long as it fits snugly around your post of your mailbox and the top part of your mailbox. Okay, I am back outside again and I'm going to apologize again for all the noises. There's people mowing and people driving by, but I don't have enough of this to finish my mailbox. I'm going to need like two or three more skeins to finish mine but i'm just going to show you the gist of it here i got my piece and i slip stitched it on the bottom just like we did down the side over here and i'm just going to slip stitch it and then when i get over to here i'm just gonna you can use a yarn needle also and sew it if that's easier for you than than slip, than slip stitching i might slip stitch it to here and then i will sew it on to my base here and then continue slip stitching it or sew it onto my base here and then continue with my slip stitch until I'm done at the end but like I said I don't have near enough I really misjudged this didn't go near as far as I thought it would but I'm going to go ahead and finish sewing this up it's real easy like I said it's the same concept for anything that you want a yarn bomb you just make pieces um, wrap it around whatever you're making or whatever you're trying to yarn bomb and just getting them all sewed together either by slip stitch or with a yarn needle. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish sewing this up real quick. Well, that's it. Kind of the basics on yarn bombing and I hope that you were able to follow along okay. I know it was just so hard for me to film, hold the camera and film and everything outside. My camera just stand just isn't tall enough. So I hope you were able to follow along and I hope you kind of understood what I did there. Uh, remember you can use that basic concept just making pieces the same size or whatever your yarn bombing and this is basically just sewing them together or slip stitching them together you know however you want to do it. And this Burnett uh, Maker Outdoor Straps worked pretty good. I liked it. Um, one, one thing I did not like about it though I found that it hurt my hands actually. I worked two, two skeins today and my hands are pretty sore from it. It could be in the big hook I used, but I think it was actually the yarn kind of just kind of hurt my hands. I'll probably buy another couple skeins to finish my mailbox. After that, I probably won't ever buy it again. It's not that it's not pretty. It's not that it's not cool. It's just I wanted to try it. It's just I'm 
I pop, I wouldn't ever use it again for anything else. So, but it, it was all right. It, it did hurt my hands. Other than that, it, you know, it works for your arm bombing. So, um, but th that's it. Uh, please don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Um, um, don't forget to check out um, all my other tutorials. I have hundreds of them on YouTube. Um, you can check me out on Facebook. If you yarn bomb anything, I'd really like to see a picture of it. You know, you don't have to use this to yarn bomb. Um, you can use people yarn bomb with all types of yarn. Um, I love to look at yarn bombing. So if you yarn bomb anything or anything else, post a picture on my Facebook page. I'd like to see it. And I'll put a link to that below in the description box. And until next time, have a nice day.